All right, this is a lecture for Section 511, Floor and Roof Framing Systems. And this really should be a, a little bit of a review for you. Um, we covered this topic also in strength or in um, structural analysis, okay? So it's really more of a statics problem than in an analysis problem than it is a design problem. But it's really the first step in design because you have to establish your loads. Okay, so this should help you gain confidence and understanding of how to quickly establish uh, design loads for uh, different elements such as beams, girders, and columns. Okay, so when you look at a framing plan, you know, I'd like you to be able to sketch, label, and calculate tributary widths for beams, and there really is a tributary width for a girder also. Um, you know, we may not use it exclusively, but we'll need it okay uh, so when you think tributary width think one dimension so typically feet or meters okay and then uh, also we want to be able to calculate tributary area <clears throat> for columns and girder loads okay so tributary area makes you think feet squared then we can take PSF loading right pounds Per foot squared and the concepts of tributary area or tributary width um, and generate loads for beams girders and columns all right so if I have load in pounds per feet squared and I multiply it by a tributary width which is in feet I get pounds per foot right typical load for a beam if I have pounds <coughs> per foot squared and I multiply it by a tributary, this is a different tributary area, which is feet squared, I end up with pounds, a concentrated load, okay? So that's really the gist of what we're doing here. We're taking general PSF loading, multiplying it by tributary width or tributary area, and we're getting pounds per foot, kips per foot, pounds or kips okay for concentrated loads all right so certainly load path is critical to us as structural engineers we're trying to find how does the load transfer through the structure and we're using the concepts of tributary width and tributary area really tributary width is the sum right sum of half the distance to the adjacent element of the same area so so spacing divided by two okay so for tributary width of a beam it's the distance beam to beam divided by two on either side added up tributary width to columns is the distance from column to column divided by two in both directions left and right added together again that's tributary width tributary area is a product <laughs> of two tributary widths perpendicular to each other right so I have a column I'm going to have a tributary width in this direction call it one and I'm going to have a tributary width in this direction call it two tributary area is tributary width one multiplied by tributary width two okay so if we have a, a typical building frame, you know, this is the frame, the elevation of a building. And I take a section through it, a plan view. That's what I get over here. <clears throat> and if I have this column grid, right, the column grid is defined by uh, these right values here, right, there's my grid one two three and then a through d across so i would say this column here <coughs> all right this i would refer to this as column a3 all right i would refer to this as column b3 all right so I can isolate a frame or a, a bay. This is called a bay. So this would be bay BC by one, two, okay? 
and I can look at that frame, okay, that bay, right? So if I put a, a PSF load on this floor, right? I put a one PSF load on this floor. What we're really doing is tracking or, or understanding that how that PSF load gets to each part of the structure. Okay, and this is approximation. This is not exact, but for PSF loads, it is exact. Okay, uh, but it's not exact if we had large concentrated loads, right? Or a concentrated load at all, right? Um, so this is a good rule of thumb. It's a method to quickly calculate loads on beams and girders, okay? So the tributary width to this beam EF, right? So I'm going to call this beam uh, EF or FE. And I want to establish the loading on it. <clears throat> so I'm going to look to the, to the right, and I'm going to see my spacing is 12 feet. So this dimension here is going to be 12 over 2, which is 6. I'm going to look to the left. This spacing is 8 feet. <coughs> so 8 <coughs> over 2 is 4. So my tributary width would be the summation of those values of 4 plus 6. So my tributary width for this beam would be said to be 10 feet. So if I had a loading, say my loads were 40 pounds a square foot, I would know that beam EF, the loading on EF would be 10 feet tributary width times 40 pounds per foot squared. So it would be 400 pounds per foot. That would be the loading on beam EF. In my analysis, I would proceed by saying if I said this was E and this was F, right, I'd have 400 pounds per foot spanning over 25 feet. And the reactions of this beam would be the load on this girder here and here. Then part of that load would go to the column, right? And that happens all for every beam on the framing plane, okay? <coughs> all right, so that's a beam, okay? A tributary width is the summation of half the spacings on either side of that beam, okay? If I look at a, a column, right, I could look at this column, right? Column B, uh, B2, right? If I go to column B2, or actually let's do column, let's do this column first, A2, since it's right there. Column A2, tributary width in this direction, horizontally, is 30 over 2, or 15 feet. Tributary width perpendicular is 25 over 2 plus 35 over 2. And obviously you could add them together first and divide by 2, and you get 30 feet. So my tributary area to column A2 is going to be 15 feet times 30 feet, which is 450 feet squared. So my P load to A2 is going to be 450 feet squared times Again, if I go with <coughs> 40 pounds a square foot of live load or total load, whatever, uh, loading. So 40 pounds a square foot, so 40 pounds per foot squared, I end up with 18,000 pounds. Okay, on column. So this would be 18 kips load there. If I go to column B2, 
tributary width left to right is equal to 30 plus 40 over 2, which is 35. Tributary width vertically, again, is 25 plus 35 over 2, which is 30. So my tributary area will be 35 feet times 30 feet, which equals 1,050 feet squared. Axial, or my P load on my concentrated load, or my axial load, my P load on B2 is going to be 1,050 feet squared times 40 pounds per foot squared. And again, that's going to be 42,000 pounds. All right, so the axial load on here would be said, estimated as 42 kips. Okay. Now, if I want to look at this girder, well, let's do column D. Let's do D, uh, D1. All right, again, tributary width in one direction is 25 over 2, which is 12.5 feet. Tributary width, getting sloppy, sorry. Tributary width <coughs> in this direction is 30 over 2, which is 15 feet. So my tributary area is 12.5 times 15, which is 187.5 feet squared. So my P load to D1 is 187.5 times 40, and I get 75 hundred pounds okay so now if I had this girder G1 so let's say this is girder G1 and I wanted to figure out what each of the loads were on that <coughs> girder I could take the tributary width in this direction multiply it by tributary width in this direction multiply it by 40 and get that reaction uh, to the girder, right? So G1 load, all right, could be, again, tributary width one would be 35 plus 25 over two, all right? And we have 30 again, tributary width two, Two equal spaces on either side so the tributary width is equal to the spacing seven and a half over two plus seven and a half over two my load to the girder is going to be 30 feet times seven and a half feet which is Oh, I'm doing load. I'm, I skip. I'm skipping over tributary area. Maybe I ought to do that so I don't mess you up. Okay, tributary area is thirty times seven and a half, which is four hundred and fifty feet squared. So, P load to G1 would be 40 pounds per foot squared times 450, which is again 18,000 pounds. Okay, so that girder G1 would have three 18 kip. <coughs> concentrate loads on it all right 
So a lot of uh, just general pre-design work, right? Um, analysis, if you will. All right. And so that's kind of what we went through. All right. So that's the end of this part of the presentation. Again, if you have questions, please um, come and see me or send me an email. Okay, so come and see me if you have questions.